subscribe to my channel click on bell icon to get notification about new video measurement length listen sonu and nandu go and measure the length of the table oh this will be fun let me measure first the length of this table is 11 spans of my hand now i'll measure the length of the table measures 12 spans of my hand oh how is it possible both of you used your hand span then why is there a difference in your measurement are their hand spans equal hey mine is bigger than sonu's that's what caused the problem all right all right i'll give paper strips of equal length to both of you use them to measure this length the length of the table is nine of these strips but when i measured it it was nine strips too the strips you gave us were of equal length that's why the length of the table measured the same mm so if we measure the length of something using similar means it measures the same tai if i have to measure a chalk stick can i use this strip this strip is longer than a chalk stick hmm you're right we will fold this paper strip to make equal parts these small parts will be useful for measuring the piece of chalk let me fold the strip 3 times and i get eight equal parts I will place the chalk along the paper strip. This chalk is equal in length to five of these small parts. Now, shall we use this strip to measure the distance between the two posts of the main gate? No, this strip is too short. I have a long string. Let's use that. Yes. Let's use the string to measure the distance between the gate post. We can see that the distance between the gate post is equal to 3 strings. You right, Tony. It's easier to measure a great distance using something of greater length and To measure shorter lengths, it is easier to use a shorter thing. You have seen that for yourselves, haven't you? Yes. Kids, you all must have gone to a cloth shop with your parents, right? Yes. Well there you must have seen somebody measuring a sheet of cloth with the help of a long metal scale Yes Hmm a sheet of cloth must measure the same no matter who measures it That is why a long metal scale is used to measure cloth in a cloth shop This scale is 1 meter long The meter is a standard unit which is used for measuring length. If we divide a meter into 100 equal parts, each part is called a centimeter. So, I can say that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. We measured the distance between the gate post with the string. Now, let's use this meter scale and measure it again in meters and centimeters yes yeah, surely this distance between the post is 3 meters and 80 centimeters my big brother uses a small ruler 
from his compost box to measure short distances. All right, Tony. Now that you've spoken about a ruler, let me show you a ruler. The numbers one, two, three, four, and so on, written beside the bigger markings on this ruler, show centimeters. Between two big markings, there are small markings. Can you see them? Yes! They show units of length smaller than centimeters. Now let us use this standard scale to measure the chalk stick again. Yeah, sure. The chalk is 8 centimeters long. Meter, centimeter. A meter is a hundred times as long as a centimeter. We use the standard unit meter to measure bigger distances. Now this is a meter scale. In the table, write whether you will measure the following lengths or distances in centimeters or meters. Length of a pencil. Well, that has to be measured in centimeter. Distance between two buildings. That has to be measured in meters. Width of a road. That has to be measured in meters as well. Now the length of your notebook. Can you take a guess? You're right, we'll measure it in centimeters. Length of a mobile phone. That's correct, it has to be measured in centimeter. Distance between two poles. That has to be measured in meters. Measure the following distances in standard units. Get your friends to do so too. Compare your observations. And measure again if there is a difference. Length of the school compound wall. When we measured, the length of the school compound wall was 10 meters. Length of a book. Length of a book is 28 centimeters. Length of a newspaper. Well, length of a newspaper, when we measured, it was 54 centimeters. Now let us find out the length of a table. Length of the table is 1 meter. Now similarly, let us measure the length of the veranda. The length of the veranda is 2 meters. Now, height of a table above the ground. Well, let us measure it. It is 70 centimeter. Now, similarly, let us find out the length of the following things. Your mom's sari. Let's try and measure it. It is 5 meters. Now, let us find out your sister's dupatta's length. That is 2 meters. Now, let us find the length of cloth required for your father's shirt. That would be around 2 meters. Now, the length of a tongue. That is 1.5 meters. And the length of a handkerchief. Let's measure it. Well, it's 20 centimeters. Kids, make an estimate of the measures of the following things. Then check your estimate against an actual measurement. Let's do it.
length of a lady finger. Hmm. Tony estimated it 7 centimeters. But you know what is the actual measurement? Well, the actual measurement is 7.1 centimeter. That's a great guess, Tony. Length of a cluster beam or gore pod. Nandu estimated it to be 4 cm. And guess what? The actual measurement is 4 cm as well. Height of a jowar plant. I asked Selene to measure the height of the jowar plant. He measured it to be 1 meter. But the actual measurement was 90 cm. Quite close, right? The girth of a banyan tree trunk. Anil's estimate for this tree was 1 meter. But the actual measurement was 1.5 meters. Still quite close, Anita. Very good. Distance between the two trees in the school. I asked Raju to estimate the distance between the two trees in our school. Raju estimated 2 meters. And the actual measurement was 1.7 meters. Great job, Raju. Quite nearby. Quite close. Measurement, weight, mass. Kids, we've already learned how to measure the lens. Now we will learn about weight or mass. Sonu, you have a ball in your hand. Can you give that ball to me? Let us try and measure the weight of the ball. But how we will do that? Hmm, good question. Here we will take this balance with us. On one side we will put the ball and on the other side we will put the marbles. With the help of these marbles we will find out the weight of the ball. The weight of this ball is 17 marbles. But I have different kinds of marble. The same ball weighs 10 of my marbles. How is that possible? How can the same ball have different weights? Salma, the marbles that Sonu brought were smaller than the marbles that Nandu brought. And that's the reason for this confusion. And that's the reason why shops keep weights, which are the standard units for measuring weight. If something is weighed using standard weights, it measures the same no matter who does the weighing. The kilogram is a standard unit for measuring weight. Uncle, please give me 2 kilograms of jar. I also want 1 kilogram of sugar. Uncle, I want 5 kilograms of wheat. Now, make a guess about the weight of the given things. Is it greater than or less than 1 kilogram? Then go to a shop and check if you've guessed right. Now, here are a few things. We need to estimate the weight, whether it is 1 kg, more than 1 kg or less than 1 kg. And then check the actual weight. A packet of salt. The estimated weight is approximately 1 kg while the actual weight is 1 kg. One big lump of jaggery. The estimated weight of one big lump of jaggery is approximately more than 1 kg. While the actual weight is 1 kg 500 grams. 50 biscuits. The estimated weight is less than 1 kg while the actual weight is 500 grams. 5 cups of sugar. 
the estimated weight is less than 1 kg while the actual weight is 750 grams. Salma, my mother wanted half a kilogram of sugar to make some halwa and we had a bag of one kilogram of sugar. Then what did you do? Little by little, I put all the one kilogram sugar in the two pans of the balance and brought them at the same level. In this way, I separated the sugar into two equal parts. Thus, each pan held half a kilogram of sugar. This is how I gave my mother half a kilogram of sugar. Wow! That's a great idea. My mother also often needs half a kilogram of something or the other. I will make a half kilogram major for your mother. I will put the leftover half a kilogram of sugar in one pan and some small stones in the other to balance the sugar. I will tie those stones in a handkerchief and that will be a half a kilogram measure. You know what? We could even make a quarter kilogram measure in the same way. Use a one kilogram weight and a balance to measure out the following weights of rice, wheat, jawar. 2 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 3 kilograms, half a kilogram, 1.5 Children, I'm sure you love to know your weight, right? For that, you just have to stand on weighing machine and check the numbers appearing on it. Well, find out your own weight. Also find out by how much it is more or less than the weight of one of your classmates. Let's try and do it. Hey, see. Tony is trying to find out his weight. He's standing on the weighing machine. Well, Tony weighs 12 kgs. Now look, Nando is trying to find out his weight. Nando's weight is 15 kgs. Did you notice something? The weight of Nando is more than the weight of Tony. Find out about various kinds of balances and use them yourself. Well, first we'll talk about the spring balance. In spring balance, there is a spring inside it. The spring balance is used to weigh a sack of food grains. Now, the electronic balance. The electronic balance is the digital balance where the weight of anything comes in written form. Digital numbers appear on electronic balance after keeping a weight in it. Next is the common balance. This kind of balance is found at the shop of a fruit seller or a vegetable seller. And lastly, scales for body weight. This kind of scale you see when you are weighing yourself. Measurement, Volume and Capacity There are some vessels full of water. Observe them and tell which ones can hold more water and which ones less. Let us see. Well, the bucket will hold 
more water and the bowl less. Would you agree with me? Yes, you do. This bucket became full when 40 glasses of water were poured into it. This bucket became full with 10 pitchers of water. The same amount of water measures different because different means are used to measure it. No matter who fills water in the bucket, it should measure the same. For that, we must use the standard measure. This is a measure of one liter. The milkman keeps this. It is used to measure out liquids such as milk and oil. We can easily get a one liter water bottle. The picture alongside shows a measure used especially for kerosene. The liter is a standard unit for measuring liquids. Take various vessels such as a pitcher, a box, a pan, etc. and make an estimate of how much water they can hold. 1 liter, less than 1 liter, more than 1 liter. Verify your guess by actually using a 1 liter bottle. These are some vessels. The pitcher can hold more than 1 liter. This box can hold less than 1 liter. This pan can hold 1 liter of water. Now we pour the water from this bottle and check how many liters of water these vessels can hold. The pitcher holds 5 liters of water. The box holds half liter of water. This pan holds 1 liter of water. Pour 3 liters of water into each of the above containers. The water will take a different shape in each container because each container is of a different shape. But the volume of water in each container is 3 liters. 5 1 liter bottles of water are poured into this bucket. The volume of the water in the bucket is 5 liters. Now children, let us find out how much more water can be added to fill this bucket completely. Well, the bucket can hold 12 liters of water. The bucket already has 5 liters of water. More water can be added to fill this bucket completely. That would be 12 liters minus 5 liters, which is equal to 7 liters. So 7 liters of more water can be added to fill this bucket completely. This bucket can hold 12 liters of water. You know what it means? It means that the capacity of this bucket is 12 liters. The amount of water that is needed to fill any container such as a pot, a bucket, a drum or a pan is called the capacity of the container. Take a bottle with a quarter liter capacity. Use this as a measure. Mark the following measures on a container. Kids, this will be fun! First, let us find out a bottle with the capacity of quarter liter. Let's fill water in it to the brim. Alright, now first and foremost, we need to take 2 liters of water in a container. Well, 
How many times you'll pour quarter liter water in order to make two liters? Hmm. If you pour four times quarter liter of water, it makes one liter. So for two liters, you need to pour water eight times with your bottle having quarter liter capacity. Let's do it then. All right. Now here we have two liters of water in the container. Let us mark this measure on the container. Correct. Next is half a liter. How many times we'll pour water from a quarter liter bottle to make half a liter? That is correct. Two times. We'll make half a liter of water. So let us take a container and pour the water twice from a quarter liter bottle. Like this. Now let us mark it on the container and write half a liter. Our third measure is one and a half liter. Now this one is a little tricky. Let me help you out in this. As I told you earlier, for one liter, four quarter liters will make one liter. And, and two times quarter liter of water makes half a liter. Which means, in order to get one and a half liter of water, we will pour the water six times from a quarter liter bottle in the container. Superb! Now let us mark it. Now the last one. The last measure is a quarter liter and it is the simplest because we already have a quarter liter capacity bottle. So we will fill the bottle one time and pour it in the container. Now mark the container. Note how many liters of water you use for the following purposes in your house. For bathing, approximately 10 liters of water is used for bathing. For mopping the floors. At least one liter of water is used for mopping the floors. For cooking. Approximately three liters of water is used for cooking. For washing kitchen utensils. About five liters of water is used for washing kitchen utensils. For drinking. 20 liters of water is used for drinking by everybody in the house. For making 10 cups of tea. One and a half liters of water is used for making 10 cups of tea. For brushing teeth. One fourth liter of water is used or a quarter liter of water is used for brushing. Watering the garden. 10 liters of water is used approximately for watering the garden. Washing vehicles. 20 liters of water is used for washing vehicles. Make a list of all those places where water is wasted. Make an estimate of how much water is wasted and suggest ways of reducing the wastage. Place Approximate amount of wastage Remedy Well, first and foremost, that is number one, is wash basin. And we waste approximately 2 liters of water every day. The remedy for that is very simple. Just turn off the tap while brushing your teeth and turn it on only while rinsing your mouth and the brush. Number 2. In the garden. We waste around 10 liters of water in the garden. 
For gardening, we definitely need water. But instead of using fresh water, we can always reuse the water which has already been used for utensil cleaning, for kitchen purposes and for mopping and cleaning purposes. Next is in the washroom. Again, there is a wastage of 10 liters of water. And the solution to that or the remedy to that is a very simple one. Instead of using a shower, you can fill your bucket with water and use it for bathing. This will save a lot of water. Number 4. Utensil Washing We waste at least 5 liters of water for utensil washing. A simple remedy for avoiding wastage would be while applying soap to the utensils, turn off the tap and turn it on only during washing them. I hope these small little remedies will help you save water. And just imagine, if we all try and save water, it will be very beneficial for our environment and for our coming generations. Isn't it? Alright.